Good morning. My name is Gresford Thomas. Um, I'm the senior pastor here at the Ontario Seventh-day Adventist Church. And uh, on behalf of the church, myself, um, Associate Pastor Peter Ron, and our members, uh, we'd like to offer our heartfelt condolences on your loss. Uh, Sister Hildeen Downs was um, a member of this church for many years. She was family to many here, and um, it is our privilege to be able to to host this memorial service. And it is our hope and prayer that as we move forward with this, that you will be um, blessed by the memories that are shared, by the words that are spoken, and that you'll see that her life was a life that was lived well. Before we go any further, I'd just like to ask that you bow your heads with me. We're going to have a word of prayer before we begin our memorial service. Let us pray. Father in heaven, it is at times like these that we need a Savior, that we need an anchor. Lord, we want to come before you at this time with, with hearts that are, are heavy at the loss that we've experienced. And Father, I just want to pray a blessing on every individual here that is feeling the, the weight of that loss. But Lord, we know we have hope in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we know that as our dear sister Hildina is, is resting, that she is resting in you. And we look forward to the day when she shall rise again and meet you. But Lord, during this time, as we honor, as we honor her memory, I pray that you will be with everything that is done and that every heart will be lifted and encouraged by what is experienced during this time. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, my name is Sineda Brown and um, I am related to dear Hildeen through my mom, uh, Beverly Brown, former Beverly Lucy from Corn Island, Nicaragua. I am going to be reading the scripture reading which is found in Revelation 21 and I'll be reading verses one through five. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the Holy Spirit, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now is the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true.
I met Hildine in the early 80s at the home of the Piraeus. Hildine and myself were both nurses, and as she worked in public health, which was one of my very favorite parts of nursing, we saw the click right away. Hildine was a very calm, lovely lady who, like myself, smiled a lot. And we became friends. I saw Hildine through her illness, and before that, her husband. And as a matter of fact, I was her husband's chaplain while he was going through hospice. I miss her. And I'm very honored to read to you this morning a small history of Hildine's life. Hildine Tatum Downs saw, first saw the light of day on Corn Island, a beautiful and picturesque isle nestled in the Caribbean Sea off the coast of Nicaragua. She was born on October 25th, 1930, to Daniel and Consuelo Tatum, Danielle was a seaman from the Cayman Islands who traveled to Corn Island where he met and married the lovely Consuelo Luzi. Hildine was the eldest of their four daughters. Her siblings were Merle, Lilita, and Luella. Studious and ambitious, Hildine learned about the newly opened nursing school at Hospital Yi. Uh, Clinica Adventista, also known as HCA, in Puerto Cabezas, Nicaragua. She applied and was accepted into the program and graduated in 1955. Thus began her nursing journey, a journey that would take her from Nicaragua to Honduras and finally to the United States. Hildine had found her calling and she was a good nurse. Hildine served as a nurse at her alma mater, alma mater under the direction of Dr. Ford B. Moore, medical director of the HCA. Dr. Moore was her valued mentor and lifelong friend. She then relocated to La Ceiba, Honduras, where she continued her nursing career at the Standard Fruit Company Hospital. In 1963, Hildine traveled to San Francisco, California, under the auspices of the Little Sisters of Mercy. She was always grateful for their assistance in helping her adjust to a new country and a new culture. Southern California beckoned, and in 1964, Hildine moved to Los Angeles and started to work at the White Memorial Hospital. Hildine ended her nursing career in 1996 as a public health nurse for the county of Los Angeles. Family was very important to Hildine. She lovingly took care of her parents and was a valuable resource to her siblings. She ensured that her sister, Merle, had the best care until her passing. Hildine emotionally and financially supported Lolita when she was a student at Collegio Vocacional de America Central in Costa Rica. She did the same for Luella, who attended the University of Monte Morales in Mexico where she completed a degree in nursing. Hildine helped both sisters immigrate to the United States. She was always a strong supporter of her sisters and their children. Although Hildine was in the United States, her heart remained in Corn Island with Jacob Downs. Distance was not a barrier to Jacob and Hildine's friendship. It blossomed into courtship and marriage. On September 27, 1970, Hildine, Jacob and Hildine promised each other 
in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. Hildin and Jacob were committed to those vows until Jacob took his last breath on November 23rd, 2018. Jacob and Hildin were very involved in their faith community. They served in the East Los Angeles SDA Church, the Rialto SDA Church, and their last home church, this one, the Ontario SDA Church. Hildine was predeceased by her parents and Merle. She leaves to cherish her memory, her sisters, Lolita Tatum Medeiros and husband Jose, and Luella Tatum. Her nieces, Connie and Andra, her nephews, Randy and Ronald, grand nieces and grand nephews, as well as many cousins and caring friends. Thank you. Before I go, we received a message from Elsa, one of her caregivers, and she said, I am very sad to hear of Mama Hildine's passing. I can hardly believe it. A few days earlier, I really missed her and dreamed about Mama Hildine. I really miss her and I'm very sad. I can only cry remembering her, but I believe Mama Hildine is resting in the Lord. Thank God for allowing me to meet and know Mama Hildine, who was so kind and who loved me so much. Good morning. My name is Bonnie Cole, and I, Hildine was my friend. I met her in the mid-90s when we first started attending this church. At that time, she was the Sabbath school superintendent. And I look around the room and see some old friends, and you can remember that Sabbath school, is, it's a little different today than it was 30 years ago. There was more, just more to it. And Hildine was an excellent leader. She asked me one day if I would teach the mission story. And so I took that responsibility and she must have thought I did fine because she asked me again if I would lead out as a superintendent. So I did that as well, and she was very kind in telling me that I talked too long and I should stick to the script. <laughs> Hildine was um, a mentor to me, especially when she asked me, she said, my time is done, I have I have served many, many years, and it's time for someone else to take the leadership role of superintendent, and she asked me to take it. And at that point, we really started to uh, see each other more often, and as the previous speaker said, we clicked. Uh, she was very loving and helped me as a new superintendent and gave me lots of advice. And we, we spent lunches together and we went on outings together and we were much more than church members. We were truly friends. When I, be, Hildine had a great sense of humor and a great laugh. She laughed easily and because when she was with her friends, she was happy, and when there was something humorous, she appreciated it. When we 
had our Sabbath school once, I asked her to participate in a skit. And the skit was that she was going to the doctor and she was supposed to have trouble with her eyes and she was, um, it was because she was watching too many soap operas was the gist of the skit in that the doctor gave her advice uh, about focusing her, her attention more on spiritual things and not these. But the way she did it, you will, you know her, so you will appreciate. I took my glasses off so I could tell you. She went like this. That she couldn't see anymore because of her. she was watching her stories. And the word stories just tickled me because that was her word. That wasn't in the script. It said soap opera. But she knew that stories would mean something to someone else. We all have someone we know in our life that comes over and stays too long and asks too much and you just kind of hope they won't come by. And I was at her home one day when she was expecting someone like that. And Jacob was quietly sitting in the rocker and listening to her tell me, oh, I, I just hope she doesn't come. She stays too long, and it's, I just feel stress. And Jacob, from the corner of the room, said, look out, Hildine, here she comes. <laughs> and she jumped. They had a great friendship and a great um, sense of humor together. He teased her all the time, and it was fun to see them. They loved each other very much. Hildeen um, had a special way of praying to my ear. She would begin a prayer this way. Kind and loving Father, I have not known anyone else. Maybe that's your culture, but I have not known others to speak to God in this manner. It touched me. I know she loved Jesus. I know she loved all of you. Today is a day of honor, and she would be very, very pleased with all the pink because that was her favorite color. She was older than me, and my mother had passed away many years ago and I called her mama. I'm gonna leave this mic here because everyone's gonna need it. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sanjay Sinclair, and um, for those of you who didn't think um, Hildeen had a son, it was me. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I also went to this, this church, you know, from it, I was a teenager, and, and Hildeen, among many of the other um, ladies here, you know, Mrs. Caballo, Bertha, Brenda, many of you, uh, you know, took care of us, took care of us, the wayward grandchildren that, that came here, and she was one of those who was always making sure that uh, all of her little grandchildren in church, you know, made sure we ate, that we were coming to church. For me specifically, she made sure, you know, I was coming on time, checking in on my, my family. And um, she also wanted to make sure I got married in time. And uh, she would ask all the time, you know, constantly, you know, not, not even if you're going to get married or have you found somebody, she says, when? When are you going to get married? You know, so she just went right to the date. And she hung on quite a bit to make sure that happened because uh, I took a long time to make that happen. But, you know, you know she, she was always diligent in, in checking on us and, and feeding us. And um, I, I missed that uh, about her. And for us, I got to really spend more time with her uh, 
not when she was at church, but, you know, when she was no longer able to, to come to church. And uh, we visited with her quite a while, and, and my, my wife uh, would be the one who would visit her a little bit more because she, she would help her out around the apartment, and uh, Hildine would, would, would pay her. And we both thought she got paid way too much for what she did around the apartment, but that was just the kindness of, of Hildine, you know, always giving, always very generous, and um, always taking care of, you know, all of her, her little, little children. And we bonded, too, because of the, the Caribbean side. You know, I was born in Jamaica, and at first I thought she was uh, Jamaican based on her accent, but it didn't matter because we had so much of the, the same culture, and, um, you know, we, we bonded that way. And during the times of, of visiting her, spending time with her, uh, when she got ill and her, you know, her, her leg was hurting, you know, the, the Caribbean side of her never wanted to complain. You know, she's just always very proper, always wanted to see how we were doing and, you know, not, you know, worried about her condition, always thinking about someone else. And, you know, during those times when we never got to see her as often as, as before, there was always this fear whenever we would see her again, um, how much, you know, her condition would have worsened. But to our surprise, many times when we'd go see her, she'd look better than the time before. And it was always like a, a surprise and an encouragement. It was like, oh man, she looks great today. And uh, there's even one day we showed up and she had really bright, shiny lip gloss on and her hair was well done and something that looked like mascara. I'm like, Hildine, are you going out? You know, where are you going? And she's like, no, I'm just, you know, lying here, uh, hanging out, just, you know, waiting for lunch or whatever. But she just always had this, this, this strong spirit. And she makes me think of what I want to be like when I get older. You know, just no matter what's happening in my life, I want to have that sharpness she had. She could see, she could hear, she still understood jokes. She could still give jokes. She was liked. And uh, even though she was the one hurting, she was the one that made us feel joyful, always gave us hope, always, you know, made us remember that, um, you know, this life is only temporary. And whatever she's going through, when Jesus comes again, it's, it's going to seem like nothing. And in her, her, her last days, she's always looking forward to Jesus coming, the blessed hope. And I, I want to be like that uh, when I get older. So... Thank you, Hildine, for all that you've done for us. The Lord is my shepherd.
Lord prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days. Good morning. My name is Jaime Britton. My mother and uh, Hildine mother, they were first cousins. And my mother was also her first teacher in Corn Island. Uh, today I'm going to read uh, the re reflections on the life of Hildine Dolores Tatum Down by Randy. Romero. He was not able to come up, so I'm taking his place. Aunt Hildine, lovingly known to her family as Dilly D. Hildiana, reserved for the Parias and the boss. Aunt Hildine assumed the role of her family matriarch on March 3, 1971 when my grandma, Linda Consuelo Tatum, passed to her rest at the age of 64. I have many fun memories of Aunt Hildine. One of the most notable memories occurred in December 1970 when Aunt Hildine, with the iconic beehive hairdo, met my mother and I at the Los Angeles International Airport in her 1967 Dodge Dart. Another fun memory, <coughs> excuse me, another fun memory was my aunt taking me to the 1973 Greater Los Angeles Auto Show and letting me help pick the color and model of her 1973 Chevelle Malibu SS. Memories of riding in the back of, the, of her 67 Dodge Dart, going to Fedco, Jemco, Whitefront, and going downtown to Bullocks and other places. Aunt Hildine was always here for us. She was, here for, she was there for my grandmother who lived to, my grandfather, sorry, who lived to be 103 years of age. She was there for my mother and aunt and my cousins. She was there for me in 1985 when my mortality was challenged. At that time, Aunt Hildine was instrumental in helping me avoid a craniotomy, uh, sorry, and instead microscopic laser surgery was performed at the City of Hope National Medical Center. She also arranged a consultation with Dr. Marina Johnson from the University of Dallas Medical Center. She ensured that I received the best medical care possible. During this period of illness, Uncle Jake and Aunt Hildine took care of me for over nine months. Such selfless devotion. Uncle Jake and Aunt Hildine 
dearly love Corn Island. They built a house on Corn Island and visited it each year until 2015 when they were no longer able to travel. Their home in California was always a gathering place for the Nicaraguan coastal residents. Aunt Hildeen was most happy to attend the Nicaraguan picnics in Elysian Park during the late 1970s and 1980s. Aunt Hildeen's last years were challenging as she faced many medical issues, including Parkinson's disease, a stroke, cardiac problems, and other maladies. But through it all, her mind remained sharp as a tack. In fact, a few days before her passing, her pressure dropped to 44 over 12. Her physician called the family to let them st stabilize her pressure. Verl, Verl Perea was at her bedside and softly said, run, little rivulet, uh, run. Run, little rivulet, run. Unhil Dean got the joke immediately and started to laugh. She then gave information about the person in the joke who was from Corn Island, born in the late 1800s, and long disease. She gave the name of the person's father, where their house was located, and the fact that this lady donated the land on which the Corn Island Seventh-day Adventist Church was built. I'm so thankful that I was able to spend the last night of, her, of Aunt Hildeen's life with her. I stayed by her bedside until five 51 a.m. on March 11, 2024. At around 1.31 that morning, at my request, she squeezed my hands for the last time. She left us at 2.05 p.m. that afternoon. My Aunt Hildeen was a loyal friend to many, a confidant devoted to and a fierce supporter of her family. She was also a wise lady who was very much in control of her affairs. Our family wishes to thank each of you for being here today to honor my aunt with your presence. Thank you for each participant who celebrated my aunt Hildeen today. Whether it, whether it was by sharing your musical talents, sharing your memories, of my aunt or in, uh, in other meaningful ways. Also, I wish to acknowledge the contribution of those who were selflessly supportive of my aunt in her, in her final years. Number one, Will Downs and Verl Perea, who at, the re at her request took care of her medical and other affairs, ensuring that she had all needed medications in a timely manner. Among other things, their all-around support of Aunt Hildeen was unwavering even in the midst of challenges. Number two, Hope Mackenzie's wise counsel was always appreciated. She was also there to assist whenever needed, including moving Aunt Hildeen from her home to the assisted living, to the nursing home and beyond. Number three, Dr. Inacio Hunt was always willing to check on Hildeen, on Aunt Hildeen, whether at her home in Montclair, the assisted living facility, or the nursing home. He provided timely medical advice when needed. Number four, Deborah Moore, who faithfully visited Aunt Hildeen and provided emotional support. Number five, Dr. Anderson San Defoe, who graciously assisted in moving her household items from Montclair, California to Linda Valley Assisted Living in Loma Linda. He also helped in getting her settled in that facility. Number six, Jessica and Ike Zhu, 
neighbors of Uncle Jake and Aunt Hildine, who faithfully assisted both of them when their mobility was challenged. And number seven, Kaiser Permanente Fontana staff, especially Juan Garcia, RN, for holding my precious aunt's body beyond the allowed time, enabling me to see her and kiss her before she was taken out of the room. I will treasure the wonderful memories of my aunt Hildine. How do you want to be remembered? The Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. And as I looked at Hildin lying in this casket, I could not but reflect that I was looking at a saint. Sometimes, we, you know, we waited a long time and then you decide, oh, this person is a saint. But really, sainthood begins in our lives right here. We're all called to be saints. And uh, Hildin was a faithful saint. In fact, the saints will inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says in Revelation uh, 14, 13, and I heard a great voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works. Do follow them. Life is like a mountain rail railway. With an engineer that's brave, we must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. Watch the curves, the fills, the tunnels. Never falter, never fail. Keep your hands upon the throttle and your eyes upon the rail. You will roll up grades of trial. You will cross the bridge of strife. See that Christ is your conductor on this lightning train of life. Always mindful of obstruction, do your duty, never fail. Keep your hands upon the throttle and your eyes upon the rail. Hillian was resolute. She was a person of decision. And you all have said a lot about her. I would not say much, but as a person who values personal relations, I see Hildine as such an excellent communicator. I do not know of anyone um, that she hated or that had uh, a run out with them, never heard about it. She was a good person. And Marvin Jake, um, Brother Jacob, I know that was, a, that was a wedding planned in heaven because of the couples that I knew in my life from our island home. I would have to say that they had um, first place who were from our island. Um, definitely, one of the exemplary uh, life to see them live. I was um, not yet born when she finished her, her studies. I was looking at that, even though I'm 
I'm old already, but um, you know, I got to know her parents um, much better. And um, Luella, uh, Liti, and uh, Merle, of course. I got to know. I got to know her there because she went to visit. But I got came to know her more up here in the in the U.S. But she was the same person always. You know, she had a great friend in Panama named. Um, Clarita Lumsdale, and, but somehow the connection with Clarita was kind of a bad, but I believe the Lord prepared that way to, when I visited her on one occasion, that the connection was able to, to go through. And she and uh, Clarita uh, spoke a couple of minutes, and Clarita uh, prayed for her and sang something for her. It was just as beautiful to see, even at the distance, these uh, great friends um, um, uh, together. We enter life not as a winner, nor as a loser, but as a chooser. We choose where we're going because in the end, each of us are the architect of our own destiny. Abe Lincoln once said that a tree is measured best when it's fallen. You know, I do not like funerals, but I love funerals. The wise man says it's better to be in the house of mourning than in the place of mirth or where games or whatever carousing is going on. And you know, John Wesley would oftentimes visit a cemetery. He did it just to reflect, to reflect on the solemnity of life. I think it would do us, each of us, good. Not only as you visit a cemetery, but daily, take those special time to reflect on the solemnity of life, how it's passing. There's a lot of questions that comes up. What if? Why this happened? You know, the Bible says there is a time for everything, and there is a time to die. Also, And each of us who are here in this room, if Jesus does not come before, we will die. So what better thing to do is than to prepare for the day we die or the day, and the day when he shall return. Questions, there's nothing wrong with that, to ask questions. And the saints in Bible time, times ask questions too. I um, think of Martha, when Jesus got there four days late. She said, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. And I'm sure that we all can agree with that. Lazarus would not have died if Jesus, if Jesus was, uh, was there. <laughs> No one died in the presence of Jesus during his earthly ministry. In fact, he stopped funeral possession. He healed everyone. He did more healing than preaching and um, teaching. What a life of example. So, um, her hearts are broken. And indeed, pain today for this unwelcome visitor has passed again, leaving pain and sadness, separation and loneliness striking where it hurts most, taking away from, taking away part of her very life. Lulu and Lelita, Randy, Ronald, Connie, and Anandra. No one knows how to handle the loss, this loss, on their own. You're going to pieces, uh, really. But in the process, your Heavenly Father will help you to um, come together, to 
be healed in this process. I read a book called When Going to Pieces Holds You Together. And Jesus is the only one that can hold you together during this um, difficult uh, time. Jesus told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Martha did not get it at that moment. You know, Jesus wanted to do so much for us. And um, his words are truth. He is uh, uh, truth. There's a lesson we can learn, we can all learn from the oyster. Life is not comfortable for the oyster once a grain of sun enter in its shell. So what does the oyster do? It does not try to fight. That won't help. But with the infinite skill that the Lord has put into this little creature, it begins to deposit a milky substance that literally goes around that um, grain of sand. And what comes out is something that um, divers are willing to risk their life, their lives, a pearl, something so precious. And as you look at it, you know, it's um, wondrous beauty wrapped our own trouble. And, you know, problems, difficulties may come our ways. But there is a way always to solve them. There is a solution. And we have a God who is willing to help us in whatever situation we uh, are going through. For nothing, nothing literally, is too hard uh, for, the, for the Lord. The experience of the patriarch Job is inspiring. He lost everything he had. He was looking also at not one but ten fresh tombs. But how did he respond? Saint Job worshipped. And he said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. That wasn't easy as he faced friends. Great friends, but who had their theology wrong. You know, they thought he was suffering because he had done something bad. He was not, uh, he, he, he had some evil things in his, his life, but no. It was because he was righteous that God chose to let him go through the fire of affliction. Because there's a lesson in that whole thing, in the vindication of the character of God. Because a person suffers, it doesn't mean that they're bad and they have done something, you know. No. Sometimes God permits certain things because He values us and He wants to do the very best for us. He goes on to say, you know, He says, My spirit is broken. I know we cannot understand this as He, you know, one would have to go through this. Each experience is different. But I quote from patriarchs and prophets, when we're encompassed with doubt, perplexed by circumstances, or afflicted by poverty or distress, Satan seeks to shake our confidence in Jehovah. Despondency may shake the most heroic faith and weaken the most steadfast will, but God understands, and he still pities and loves. To wait patiently, to trust when everything looks dark, is the lesson we need to learn. Heaven will not fail us in our day of adversity. Job search for meaning in what he was going through. And his faith was shaken. He questioned. He said in Job 14, 14, if a man dies, will he live again? It's not that he lost faith, but the strongest saint. There's a time come when you know, you do not understand certain things as clear as you thought you understand it. But he was hard-pressed. 
and facing death unflinchingly, his faith heard the call of the life giver, resurrecting him back to life. I will wait, he said, until my change come. You know, when you're criticized and going through a difficult time, it's hard <laughs> not to get downhearted or feel somewhat discouraged. But Job, you know, had his eyes and his, and his Savior. That's why he could say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's something worth singing about. We need to sing more of the wondrous things of God, His name, and what He has really done um, for, um, for us. You know, as Job went through this darkness, his faith caught hold of a brighter future. So in panoramic view, he was able to see things from the divine perspective, just as the psalmist Asaph. He was so certain of what he saw and what he believed that he wanted posterity to know about it. He wanted we who are here today to know about this. And he wanted this, what he was going to say, to last for time and eternity. That's in Job 19, 25. He says, For I know that my Redeemer lives. I know. I have experienced His love. I know Him. I know what I'm going through. My body is going uh, to nodding and soon I'll be eaten by worms. But I know that he lives. That is sufficient for me. That is what uh, he, he was saying. And you know, he got a glimpse of the first coming of Christ when he came 2,000 years ago. For he said, for he said, um, he wanted this to be written with an iron pen and with lead engraved, this says, on a rock. This precisely. I know my Redeemer liveth. Lives before his living and he will continue to live. He can be your Redeemer and my Redeemer too in a, even a more fuller sense. And he says that and, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. Christ, that Christ's first coming. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God. He was looking like you and I now towards the second coming of Christ. As we call it, looking for the blessed hope of a glorious uh, Lord who shall appear in heaven soon and very soon. The time ahead will be difficult, but you can trust Christ's promise. He says in the end of Matthew, I will be with you. First to the disciples, but to each of us here and to all his faithful uh, children. There will be pain and tears. The furnace will be hot. But my grace, he says, is sufficient. Sufficient for you, my grace. You may not get the desire of your heart. You may have to live with a disease. You may have to go through some tough struggles in your lives. But yes, he said, um, my grace is sufficient for you. This is the grace that brings about uh, salvation. Great grace that the Lord has really, has really um, offered us. You will need, dear ones, this all-sufficient grace. So remember, in your trials, tears, and heartaches, that you are not alone. That His grace is sufficient for you. And on the, and on the journey to heaven, on the journey to heaven, the train of our dear friend, sister, aunt, grand-aunt, has stopped. 
she is not here anymore in life. But her memories will linger on. She is not there either in glory. But she sleeps in the blessed hope of a glorious tomorrow with Christ. Amen. I just want to close sharing a short story that I, that I once heard. And there was this uh, very wealthy man. He was a collector of uh, paintings. His son went to war and um, went to the army and he went to war. He made friends with uh, another young soldier. And the son knew the Lord Jesus Christ and he shared about Jesus to this other friend. But his life was taken from him. But his friend was so appreciative of what, had done, of what he had done for him that he wanted in some tangible way to express his gratitude to his father. He could draw a little, not like the great painters, but somehow he draw this uh, um, friend the best he could. And he knocked on the door, the father, and he told him who he was and what his son had done for him. And in gratitude, he wanted to just present this uh, little portrait that he had made of, of his son. The father thanked him and they parted. After the father died, there was a great auction that was to be done because with all these great paintings, people wanted, a lot of people wanted these, uh, these paintings. So, the auctioneer knocked his gavel down and um, the first one was a portrait of his, the son. It says, $20 for the portrait of the, of the son, $20. Nobody moved. He continued, $20 for the portrait. No one stepped up. Then he went down and said, $10 for the portrait of the son. And the old gardener who was there stepped up. And he bought it, paid it $10 for it. The auctioneer. Then take his, took his gavel and knocked again. He said, ladies and gentlemen, this auction is over. For the father left written that whoever takes the son will take all the patents, all his estate. Friends, family members who are here, this morning, the Father has given us His Son. He's the greatest gift. If you take the Son, you take everything. I invite each of you, wherever your walk is with the Lord right now, make that commitment to receive the Son. Because all this state that heaven offers throughout eternity will be yours. May God bless you and keep you faithful until that day when we will meet again or there, um, Hildin, and above all, we'll meet our Lord and Savior, whose promises is sure that He is coming. And we can hear the footsteps of a coming King. May God bless you. And the program... Um, There is a song I'd like to invite you all. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry.
Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for being here with us today as we remember the life of Hildine Tatum Downs. We're grateful to you for the way you led her life, a life of unselfish service to her family and to the people she came in contact with. We ask that you comfort and console her family and her loved ones. Thank you because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And he promised that even if we die, we will live again if we believe in him. Grant that on that resurrection morning, when the roll is called up yonder, we will all be there together with Hildeen to enjoy the blessings of eternal life with Jesus. Help us to always believe in the blessed hope. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, amen. You're all invited to reception right up this here in the church hall. Thank you. <laughs> 